Epiphany, also known as Theophany in the East, is a Christian feast day that celebrates the revelation of God incarnate as Jesus Christ. In Western Christianity, the feast commemorates principally the visit of the Magi to the Christ child, and thus Jesus' physical manifestation to the Gentiles. It is sometimes called Three Kings Day, and in some traditions celebrated as Little Christmas. Moreover, the Feast of the Epiphany, in some denominations, also initiates the liturgical season of Epiphany Tide. Eastern Christians, on the other hand, commemorate the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, seen as his manifestation to the world as the Son of God. The spot marked by Kaiser El Yahud in the West Bank, and Al Matas in Jordan on the East Bank, is considered to be the original site of the baptism of Jesus and the ministry of John the Baptist. The traditional date for the feast is January 6. However, since 1970, the celebration is held in some countries on the Sunday after January 1st. Those Eastern churches which are still following the Julian calendar observe the feast on what, according to the internationally used Gregorian calendar, is January 19th, because of the current 13-day difference between the Julian and Gregorian calendars. In many Western Christian churches, the eve of the feast is celebrated as Twelfth Night. The Monday after Epiphany is known as Plough Monday. Popular Epiphany customs include Epiphany singing, chalking the door, having one's house blessed, consuming three kings cake, winter swimming, as well as attending church services. It is customary for Christians in many localities to remove their Christmas decorations on Epiphany Eve, although those in other Christian countries historically remove them on Candlemas, the conclusion of Epiphany Tide. According to the first tradition, those who fail to remember to remove their Christmas decorations on Epiphany Eve must leave them untouched until Candlemas, the second opportunity to remove them. Failure to observe this custom is considered inauspicious. Section 2. Etymology and Original Word Usage The word Epiphany is from Koine Greek Pi Iota Phi Nu Epsilon Iota Alpha, Epiphania, meaning manifestation or appearance. It is derived from the verb Phi Alpha Nu Epsilon Iota Nu, Phan A, meaning to appear. In classical Greek it was used for the appearance of dawn, of an enemy in war, but especially of a manifestation of a deity to a worshipper. In the Septuagint the word is used of a manifestation of the God of Israel. In the New Testament the word is used in 2 Timothy 1.10 to refer either to the birth of Christ or to his appearance after his resurrection, and five times to refer to his second coming. Alternative names for the feast in Greek include Tau Alpha Theta Epsilon Omicron Phi Nu Iota Alpha, Tau Theophany A Theophany, Eta Eta Nu Rho Alpha Tau Omega Nu Phi Tau Omega Nu, I am Araton Photon, He Him Araton Photon, The Day of the Lights, and Tau Alpha Phi Tau Alpha, Tau Phota, The Lights. Section 3. History. Epiphany may have originated in the Greek-speaking eastern half of the Roman Empire as a feast to honor the baptism of Jesus. Around 200, Clement of Alexandria wrote that, but the followers of the early Christian Gnostic religious teacher Basilides celebrate the day of his baptism too, spending the previous night in readings. And they say that it was the 15th of the month Tybi of the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar. And some say that it was observed the 11th of the same month. The Egyptian dates given correspond to January 6th and 10th. The Basilides were a Gnostic sect. The reference to readings suggests that the Basilides were reading the Gospels. In ancient Gospel manuscripts, the text is arranged to indicate passages for liturgical readings. If a congregation began reading Mark at the beginning of the year, it might arrive at the story of the baptism on January 6, thus explaining the date of the feast. If Christians read Mark in the same format the Basilides did, the two groups could have arrived at the January 6 date independently. The earliest reference to Epiphany as a Christian feast was in AD 361, by Amianus Marcellinus. The holiday is listed twice which suggests a double feast of baptism and birth. The baptism of Jesus was originally assigned to the same date as the birth because Luke 3.23 was misread to mean that Jesus was exactly 30 when he was baptized. Epiphanius of Salamis says that January 6 is Christ's birthday, that is, his epiphany. He also asserts that the miracle at Cana occurred on the same calendar day. Epiphanius assigns the baptism to November 6. The scope to epiphany expanded to include the commemoration of his birth, the visit of the Magi, all of Jesus' childhood events, up to and including the baptism by John the Baptist, and even the miracle at the wedding at Cana in Galilee. In the Latin-speaking West, the holiday emphasized the visit of the Magi. The Magi represented the non-Jewish peoples of the world, so this was considered a revelation to the Gentiles. In this event, Christian writers also inferred a revelation to the children of Israel. 
John Chrysostom identified the significance of the meeting between the Magi and Herod's court. The star had been hidden from them so that, in finding themselves without their guide, they would have no alternative but to consult the Jews. In this way the birth of Jesus would be made known to all. In 385, the pilgrim Egeria described a celebration in Jerusalem and Bethlehem, which she called Epiphany that commemorated the Nativity. Even at this early date, there was an octave associated with the feast. In a sermon delivered on December 25, 380, St. Gregory of Nazianzus referred to the day as the Theophany, saying expressly that it is a day commemorating the Holy Nativity of Christ and told his listeners that they would soon be celebrating the baptism of Christ. Then, on January 6 and 7, he preached two more sermons, in which he declared that the celebration of the birth of Christ and the visitation of the Magi had already taken place, and that they would now commemorate his baptism. At this time, celebration of the two events was beginning to be observed on separate occasions, at least in Cappadocia. St. John Cassian says that even in his time, Egyptian monasteries celebrated the Nativity and the Baptism together on January 6. The Armenian Apostolic Church continues to celebrate January 6 as the only commemoration of the Nativity. Section 4. Music. Classical. Johann Sebastian Bach composed in Leipzig two cantatas for the feast which concluded Christmas died. Z. Worden aus Saba a la Komen, EWV 65, Liebse Emanuel, Herzog der Frommen, EWV 123. Part 6 of his Christmas oratorio, Herr, Wenn die Stolzen finde Schnauben, was also designated to be performed during the service for Epiphany. In Otorino Respighi's symphonic tone poem Roman Festivals, the final movement is subtitled Bofana and takes place during Epiphany. Subsection. Music. Carols and Hymns. Nun liebe Seel. Nun ist est Zeit is a German Epiphany hymn by Georg Weissel, first printed in 1642. Two very familiar Christmas carols associated with Epiphany are As with Gladness, Men of Old, written by William Chatterton Dix in 1860 as a response to the many legends which had grown up surrounding the Magi, and We Three Kings of Orient are, Written by the Reverend John Henry Hopkins, Jr., then an ordained deacon in the Episcopal Church. Instrumental in organizing an elaborate holiday pageant for the students of the General Theological Seminary in New York City in 1857 while serving as the seminary's music director. Another popular hymn, less known culturally as a carol, is Songs of Thankfulness and Praise, with words written by Christopher Wordsworth and commonly sung to the tune St. Edmund by Charles Stegall. A carol used as an anthem for Epiphany is the Three Kings. Section 5. Date of the Celebration. Until 1955, when Pope Pius XII abolished all but three liturgical octaves, the Latin Church celebrated Epiphany as an eight-day feast, known as the Octave of Epiphany, beginning on January 6 and ending on January 13. The Sunday within that octave was since 1893 the Feast of the Holy Family, and Christmas Tide was reckoned as the twelve days ending on January 5 followed by the January 6 to 13 octave. 1969 revision of the general Roman calendar made the date to some extent variable, stating, the Epiphany of the Lord is celebrated on 6 January, unless, where it is not observed as a holy day of obligation, it has been assigned to the Sunday occurring between 2 and 8 January. It also made the Feast of the Epiphany part of Christmas time, which it defined as extending from the first Vespers of Christmas up to and including the Sunday after Epiphany. Prior to 1976, Anglican churches also observed an eight-day feast, beginning on January 6. Today, the Epiphany of Our Lord, classified as a principal feast, is observed in some Anglican provinces on January 6 exclusively but in the Church of England the celebration is on 6 January or transferred to the Sunday falling between 2 and 8 January. Lutheran, United Methodist and United Church of Christ congregations, along with those of other denominations, may celebrate Epiphany on January 6, on the following Sunday within the Epiphany week, or at another time as local custom dictates. Eastern churches celebrate Epiphany on January 6. Some, as in Greece, employ the modern revised Julian calendar, which until the year 2800 coincides with the Gregorian calendar, the one in use for civil purposes in most countries. Other Eastern churches, as in Russia, hold to the older Julian calendar for reckoning church dates. In these old calendar churches Epiphany falls at present on Gregorian January 19, which is January 6 in the Julian calendar. Section 6. Epiphany Season. In some churches, the Feast of the Epiphany initiates the Epiphany Season, also known as Epiphany Tide. In Advent 2000, the Church of England, Mother Church of the Anglican Communion, 
introduced into its liturgy an optional Epiphany season by approving the Common Worship series of services as an alternative to those in the Book of Common Prayer, which remains the Church's normative liturgy and in which no such liturgical season appears. An official publication of the Church of England states, the Christmas season is often celebrated for twelve days, ending with the Epiphany. Contemporary use has sought to express an alternative tradition, in which Christmas lasts for a full forty days, ending with the Feast of the Presentation on 2nd of February. It presents the latter part of this period as the Epiphany season, comprising the Sundays of Epiphany and ending only with the Feast of the Presentation. Another interpretation of Epiphany season applies the term to the period from Epiphany to the day before Ash Wednesday. Some Methodists in the United States and Singapore follow these liturgies. Lutherans celebrate the last Sunday before Ash Wednesday as the Transfiguration of Our Lord, and it has been said that they call the whole period from Epiphany to then as Epiphany season. The Evangelical Lutheran Church in America used the terms time after Epiphany to refer to this period. The expression with after has been interpreted as making the period in question correspond to that of ordinary time. The Presbyterian Church does not celebrate Epiphany or Pentecost as seasons. For this church, expressions such as Fifth Sunday after Epiphany indicate the passing of time, rather than a liturgical season. It instead uses the term ordinary time.